This show is brought to you by... Saudi's Red Sea International takes a 51% stake in First Fix and Mazdar to develop a wind power plant in Kazakhstan. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Faraj. Saudi headquartered construction firm Red Sea International has acquired a 51% stake in local construction firm First Fix for $145.1 million, making the latter its subsidiary. Red Sea is the developer behind the ambitious regenerative tourism destinations the Red Sea and Amala. It says the acquisition will be funded through a bank loan. Red Sea says through this acquisition, it will gain a critical stream of electromechanical and civil construction capabilities that are crucial to its clients. Mazdar has signed a roadmap for developing an up to one gigawatt wind power plant with a battery energy storage system in Kazakhstan. This wind project will power homes and cut emissions. Kazakhstan aims to derive half of its energy mix from renewables by 2050. Abundant in wind and sunshine, the Central Asian region is a strategic market for Mazdar. In April, it reached a financial close on three solar power projects in Uzbekistan with a combined capacity of around 900 megawatts. Iraq's parliament has approved a $153 billion budget that gives the federal government more control over Kurdistan region oil exports. It's valid for three years and 12.7% of the budget will go to the Kurdistan region. The Kurdish government earns billions of dollars exporting oil to Turkey without the Iraqi federal government's approval. But under the new budget, 400,000 barrels per day will be shipped from the Kurdistan region to Baghdad, with revenues going to a central bank account overseen by Baghdad. The first energy shipment of Russian oil to energy-starved and dollar-strapped Pakistan is due to be unloaded at Karachi port today. Pakistan is in the midst of an economic downturn and a long-running energy shortage. Pakistani officials say shipments will be paid for in currencies of friendly countries, with Pakistan's U.S. dollar reserves dangerously low and Russia pivoting away from the greenback. They say this is the first ever Russian oil cargo to Pakistan and the beginning of a new relationship between the two countries. Goldman Sachs has downwardly revised its year-end price estimate for Brent crude to below $90 a barrel. It comes after two other downward revisions in the past six months. The investment bank lowered its Brent outlook for December to $86 a barrel, down from $95. The bearish sentiment is on the back of rising supply and reduced demand from China. Global wealth manager UBS, on the other hand, has forecast Brent crude will reach $95 by end year. JP Morgan expects Turkey's central bank to hike interest rates to 25% from the current 8.5% at its meeting on June 22nd. It's the first scheduled policy meeting after Hafiza Gay Erkan was appointed as central bank governor. JP Morgan says it maintains its year end policy rate forecast at 30%, with risks on the upside. It also forecasts a recession in the second half of this year on the back of tightening credit conditions. Let's take a look now at today's Forbes Real Time Billionaires ranking. It tracks the daily ups and downs of the world's wealthiest people. Our biggest winner today is LVMH's Bernard Arnault. He's up $3.9 billion with net wealth of $221.4 billion. Our second biggest winner today is Indonesian coal billionaire Lau Tak Kuang, up $2.1 billion with net wealth of $22.5 billion. And our third place winner is L'Oreal's Francois Betancourt Meyer. She's up $759 million with net wealth of $87.5 billion. Check out our website and our social media for all of the latest billionaires news. And Silvio Berlusconi, who dominated Italian public life for decades as a billionaire, media module, businessman and prime minister, has died aged 86. The larger-than-life character was Italy's longest-serving premier but was also plagued by scandal. Despite being diagnosed with leukemia, he was active in politics until the end. Berlusconi also wielded huge influence through his television and newspaper interests, his ownership of AC Milan, and his sheer wealth as Italy's richest person for a decade. I'm Ramia Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. This show is brought to you by.